If Tuesday night was about dancing the polka, it's been about touring the state since then. We're joined now by Governor Tony Evers. Thanks for your time. Hi, Zach. Now, Governor, you've crisscrossed Wisconsin the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. What do those visits connect to the work of dealing with the legislature? Well, uh, they, they, you know, in yesterday, for example, I was in two, uh, two school districts and the work that they're doing absolutely has a lot to do with, you know, funding of public schools and, and other legislative things. So uh, we learned a lot, uh, e even, you know, things that seemingly are small, but uh, we, we talked with a lot of students about their, that were youth apprenticeships and how that works. And so everything that I do when I'm going out and about the state has something to do with legislation. Uh, we spoke with uh, Speaker Voss last month, and mm -hmm. he said that more money is not the solution to solving some of the knowledge gaps that occurred during COVID. Do mm -hmm. you agree or disagree? Well, money does play a role in it, clearly. I mean, we have school districts going to referenda every single election, and two things happen there. One is that most of them pass, and uh, that raises property taxes, so that's obviously a legislative issue. And, and second of all, there's 20 to 30 percent that don't pass every time. And so what that what that does is creates a system of haves and have nots. That is a legislative issue. So, yes, I, I, I think it's important that uh, we look at every option to have kids learn in a better way. But uh, at the end of the day, one of those things is resources. You know, both on election night and during your inaugural address, you connected your victory with a vote to save democracy. Is your win enough to do that, or do we need more legislation to avoid what you called, quote, a trajectory bent toward permanently undermining the institutions that are fundamental to who we are as a people? Well, our election and the way it was run, and obviously everything went fine. You know, we have a, a Republican that's head of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. They certified the election. So I think things went well. Now, do I think there's some things that could be better? Frankly, I would be, I'd like to have automatic uh, voter registration so that people are registered. That doesn't mean they have to vote. And I think it would be good to give the those lo local clerks the ability to you know, process some of those early voting things uh, beforehand so that they don't have to do it at four o'clock in the morning. But the system is strong and basically, um, yes, the, uh, do I think that that election and the way it was run helped people understand how important democracy is and frankly, how it, it's always been strong. I mean, it, in Wisconsin, so much of the hard work, 90% or more, happens locally. And it happens by Republicans, Democrats, independents, you know, the clerks, the local clerks. Those are the folks that do all the hard work. It's not what happens in Madison. And so we need to reaffirm our support for that and continue to move forward. Now, you've had meetings with Assembly Speaker Robin Voss and Senate Majority Leader Devin Lemahieu last month, the first time in a long time for those. Do you expect that to be a regular thing going forward? Yeah, I do. I don't think it's going to be like every Wednesday at noon or something like that. But yeah, I, I've never had a problem with meeting with them. Obviously, during the pandemic, that made it more difficult. So yes, I thought both meetings went well and we'll continue to do it. And uh, there's lots of things that we, you know, that I know that, uh, and I think they know too, there's bipartisan support for it. Now, in your first two budgets, the negotiations appeared from the outside to consist of Republicans trying to figure out how far they could go before you would veto the entire bill. Mm -hmm. Do you expect this process to look different? It'll be different in, the, in that uh, things like shared revenue, how we're, how we're gonna fund our public schools, fixing the roads and broadband, things like that, there absolutely is common ground to be f held. And then, you know, after that, uh, we'll see. I, you know, we, we may be in positions where we fight about different things, and I anticipate we will. Whether those things will be enough for me to veto a bill or a uh, budget or not, I don't know at this time. Now, we're finally starting to see some of Governor Walker's appointees to some of those state boards step down after overstaying their terms, specifically on the DNR board. In the future, would you expect to run names past Senate Majority Lemahieu in order to see if he likes them off the bat, or are you just going to announce them cold? We'll, we, well, first of all, we announce people that we feel will be okay with Senator Lemahieu. And 
I appreciate the fact that he said every everyone that we have out there, they're going to give it an up and down vote. You know, and they're all good people. I mean, I, there's no reason why not to. And the fact that we, the fact that people waited, a handful waited until uh, the end of the calendar year to get out, I, I find that you know refreshing that they come to that conclusion, but that should have happened a long time ago. Now, you recently announced your new selection for DNR Secretary, Adam Payne. Just so happens he's the county administrator from Senator Lemahieu's home county of mm. Sheboygan. Was that a coincidence, or is that something you think will help speed the confirmation? Well, it, it, was a, it was a coincidence. I've known Adam for a long time. I'm from Sheboygan County. I know that he's done a great job there. I know that his background is one that uh, you know, he's, his father and was, a, uh, I think, a professor at Stevens Point and in, in, that, in the area of the, you know, the natural resources. And so it, it was just a natural. If, if it helps that he's from Sheboygan County and uh, so is uh, Senator Lemhew, that's great. But that's not why we chose him. Uh, switching to the topic of the Supreme Court election that's mm -hmm. coming up, it seems like any negotiations over the other major topic of abortion will be tied directly to the outcome of that election. There doesn't seem to be any room for compromise until we know what's going to happen with the court and that issue. I would say so. I, I, I can't imagine that we will be able to come to some conclusion to uh, to get us to a point where we were before Roe v. Wade legislatively. So that's why we filed a lawsuit. I think the lawsuit is going to be successful and it's likely to end up in the in Wisconsin Supreme Court. Would you be comfortable if voters approached that Supreme Court election from the point of view of abortion rights? Of course. Yeah, it is a big deal in the state of Wisconsin. Most people in the state uh, do believe that uh, that women should have their, you know, that decision making left up to them. And so, yes, I, if, if that's the way it plays out, that's the way it plays out. But it's an important issue. It was an important issue in the campaign, my campaign, and uh, I believe women should have those rights. Now, uh, including in the topic of abortion, the FDA recently announced that they would be expanding access to the so-called abortion pill, mm -hmm. but that's not available in Wisconsin, both due to the 1849 law and more recent legislation. Is that something that will have to get sorted out way down the road as to whether people will be able to access that? I can't imagine that will be dealt with by the legislature, but we'll see. I mean, certainly if there's things that legislatively can happen that allow women to utilize this, uh, the, this pharmaceutical. Uh, I think we should, but I'm guessing that's not going to happen. So that's going to be down the road. One other issue that Republicans have brought up is the use of TikTok on state mm. devices. We've seen other states ban them. Is right. that something you're leaning towards? Yeah, I, I made a decision to do that. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll be issuing a, an executive order early next week to, uh, to ban that. How common is the use of TikTok on state devices? Not, not, not very. I mean, the, the number of people, it's a relatively small number. I'd say probably less than 30 uh, all, to, all told of all state employees. So that's not a, that's not a majority by any stretch. Uh, so it's, it's not pervasive, but uh, we feel it's important to, uh, uh, to make sure that even in the small number of people that use it, that they shouldn't be using it. Does that fall under the larger purview of just electronic security? Because we've heard other experts say, well, TikTok's really no different than yeah. a lot of other social media devices you download onto a yeah, phone. Yeah, that's a great question. We, we are in constant conversations with FBI and also uh, Wisconsin Emergency Management and others that uh, are really into the, you know, the nitty gritty of that. And we'll follow their advice just like we did with TikTok. All right. Governor Evers, thanks for your time today. Thanks, Zach.